Coming up today on YOLO Texas. Hit where I hit. Ah! Go ahead. <laughs> oh my God, they're all over. <laughs> this is the alpaca. This yeah. is the alpaca attack. This is Stingray Bay. Oh my gosh, look at them. Sting, look, 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 look. We're passionate about food. Whatever it is we do, our style of Italian, we're very serious about it. Hey, how you doing? You here to pick up? Yes, sir. Tell me your name. Ed. Ed. Two saw blades. Two saw blades. Ed, thanks for bringing these to me. You're awesome. You want to print a receipt? No, we're good. I don't need anything. All right, thank you guys. Thanks, Ed. Have a good one. No cutting yourself. That's all I ask. About six years ago, we were living in Michigan. We decided we wanted to change. So we bought an RV and started traveling. We got to Bastrop, um, which is like 30 minutes from here. And we thought, let's just kind of put down roots here for a little bit and hang out and then move along. We were gonna go to Oregon. I started a little craft booth. Okay. And in that craft booth, Chris decided he was gonna sharpen knives. I didn't sell anything. <laughs> And he <laughs> was the complete attraction. Oh my God. And that literally was how this whole store was yeah. born. And then little by little, it's just kind of grown into a How cool of a wife a is store. that? You have an amazing wife. Y'all are an amazing couple. And we're so glad you landed here in Texas. In Texas, yes. yeah. <laughs> I'm grateful to be here. When did you discover your love for sharpening? When we got to Texas, we had no idea we would be here longer than two months. But when I broke out with that sharpener, the phone rang off the hook and couldn't stop if I wanted to. Like literally from one tiny little sharpener into just, it just keeps morphing and we just continue to add services and products and. So can you show me around a little bit? And yeah, so Introduce right here, me to different things. In this immediate room, you'll see our custom knives in our cases. Okay. And we don't actually make knives here in the shop. Okay. We can sign knives with makers from mostly around Texas, but also from other states as well. Okay. So we sell the supplies that many of them use. So we sell quality knife steel, We've got knife handle material over here. We sell grinding belts for okay. knife makers to use on their grinders. Okay. Um, we sell anvils, we sell forges, we sell tongs and hammers. So Those beautiful hammers. Oh my most goodness. Most all supplies that wow, you need. Wow, this is heavy. Handmade. <laughs> hand, heavy that's hand. handmade in Texas. Yeah. I feel like Thor <laughs> right now. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> I will give this back to you. Sure, sure. <laughs> take, take a look in, you know, in the case yeah. and kind of see what we've got a little I, bit. Quite the cleaver you've got there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and we refurbish knives as well. And so if oh, you've got a knife okay. that maybe it was your, your grandmother's knife or it belonged to your parents and it's got some sentimental value to you, but it has maybe seen better days, okay. you can bring that in and we'll restore and refurbish that knife for you. Y'all do so much. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. There's some very talented it's knife incredible. makers in Texas. Yeah, and you get to showcase them. Uh -huh. That's right. That's yeah. amazing. I've got a great community. You know, when somebody said to me, "Wow, you're really passionate about a knife," it's it's people. Yeah, it really is. Okay, look, I'm learning skills now. <laughs> is this like? A giant nail file. It is. Okay. It is. And this will get the sickest, sharpest edge. So be nice. careful not to drag a finger down on that. Promise not to. So then I start here. Start right there. Okay. Some yeah. people will do this. Okay. It gives you a little bit of control. Try that. Yes, ma'am. Ooh, I like this one better. There's no cutting yourself. So obviously this is this is made to hold a knife. Yes. So do you have bigger equipment? We do, we do. This one, you have longer hair and loose clothing. Okay. Uh, you should be okay. <laughs> you should be okay. Okay, I trust you. I, just uh, wanna... I think I have a hair tie. So watch this one inch surface right here. All you're doing is just gently setting it. Wow. 
I feel like there might be some fear on my face. Which is good. Okay. Fear is good. Fear is good. So I'm gonna, I'll okay, hold your go. hand on the first one. Okay. Hold it tight. Okay. Come down a little bit, right about there. Okay. And set gently. Yep, yep, yep. You did it. I did it. You did it. Oh, okay. It I, makes and, me and nervous I'm too. I have all my fingers left. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and then, and I'll just keep doing that a few times. I love the, the warning symbol right there. That's yeah, straight yeah. to the point. To the <laughs> Don't point. put your hand on it. So how does the process for a knife actually begin? Well, you can either do forging or stock removal, but I'll bet if we took you out to Justin and let you see the process, that'd be a better description. Right. So this is our friend Justin. Like Welcome to the fire. Him. Yes. Okay. So. So we're talking about the process of like how a knife gets started. Sure. So this is it. This is the beginning of it okay. right here. Take raw steel and get it up to about 2,000 degrees and start hitting it. <laughs> You're swinging. Oh shoot, where do you want me to stand? This seems no, no, very no, no, dangerous. No, 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 you're good. Okay. You got close to our shoes, yes. you're fine. Okay. Tacobas? Yes, thank you. Yep. But basically right now, we just gotta get this flat and drawn out, and I'll get the knife about 90% to shape on the bar, and then I'll fine tune it. Good. Okay, hit where I hit. Go ahead. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Oh my gosh. Woo. That was fun. <laughs> that was awesome. Okay. Now that we got Ooh. our tip all squared away. Yes. <laughs> um, eventually, you end up with something about like this. Okay. Beautiful knife-shaped object. Nice. And that's a forged knife. There's a lot more to just this. Oh yes, this. there's a lot more. <laughs> that's crazy. It goes from that to this to showroom knife. Thank y'all so fun? much. That was so cool. Oh, good. I think I had a giant smile the entire. I still do. Have we saw. It. <laughs> we saw. It. <laughs> so glad you had fun. Yes. Now that you've learned. The process and all of the steps. Yes. I would like to present you with something. Oh my gosh! How freaking cool is this? That's insane. Look at that. It's got our logo on it. This is amazing. Thank you all so much. Like, I'm in awe. Y'all are great. Point. Straight to the point. <laughs> yeah. Coming up next, we meet some of the cutest critters you'll ever see. So at Black Barn Alpacas, we are on 16.29 acres here in Floresville, Texas. What we wanted to do was something sustainable. We wanted to really focus on uh, breeding, fleece, and then since we love our alpacas so much and think they're so wonderful, and everybody else thinks they're wonderful, that we opened up agritourism as well. our property about four years ago and about two years ago we were sitting around and figuring out what we wanted to do. Okay. We, knew we wanted to do something with animals, something sustainable. I already loved alpacas and my wife did too. We'd always bought pictures and postcards. And okay. Little yeah. trinkets, everything alpaca okay. related. We always thought that. they were adorable. I do that too. Somehow innately we knew that um, alpacas were our thing and we started talking about it and then I started investigating and we were going to start off with 10 or 20 maybe but now we ended up somewhere around 65. Oh my god. Up to around 80. In fact, we have 13 more coming in soon. The more Art. research we yeah. did about them, the more we realized that they were really the perfect animal. Again, the sustainability factor of yeah. it, and we can actually, you know, uh, make goods out of their fleeces. Every year. Again, as a bonus as an interior designer, so I can kind of incorporate that in, into what I do. Yeah, so tell us more about that, because that's a totally different spin. So I actually have a, a full functioning uh, interior design firm where I focus on residential and commercial interiors. And one of the goals with the alpaca products that we're going to do is launch a sustainable collection of alpaca goods, anything ranging from pillows to rugs to custom area rugs, 
and uh, so stay tuned for yeah. for those fun finds How you know cool. coming up. So you have some like really fun stuff set up. I can see it from here. <laughs> yes, yes, and we actually had lots of requests to use the space, you know, for parties. We've got our excellent garden area over there, and then our retail store, okay. and then we also have our barn that's filled with all of the floofy critters. All the floofy critters, <laughs> I love it. This is a whole learning opportunity for me, and I'm loving it. You know, we absolutely adored alpacas, so we opened up agritourism as well so that people could come by, learn a little bit about alpacas, some alfactas, if you will, <laughs> and then also be able to just hang out with them and enjoy them. You can feed them and, you know, and, and pet them and, and hang out with them, which is really, you know, the best part is just really getting to know them. Welcome to our garden area, Ooh. where we encourage people to sip on champagne. We call it a sip and spit, How where cute. you can yeah. sip champagne, and, and, and I joke that you could let the alpaca <laughs> spit on you, <laughs> and even enjoy a charfleufery oh my with them, and we actually can let the alpacas in here, so really? kind of just hang out with you while you're enjoying it. You know, in the future, we want to have chef night. Um, oh. where we have a chef come and cook for folks and they can oh, that's cool. you know, sit out here, we can that's arrange really tables, cool. it'll be by uh, appointment as well, mm -hmm. you know, so this will be very versatile for us for sure. Uh, this is a great space. Yeah, and what's nice too, you know, you can eat in here and the alpacas will come in and they'll enjoy it too. And they, you know, they're more curious than annoying, which is that's why they're, that's what their appeal is. So. Oh, right, that's what makes them so charming. Welcome to our store. <laughs> One of our favorite things to show is what the alpaca fleece feels like once it's been brushed and washed and processed. So soft. Naturally hypoallergenic and again, fully sustainable. Awesome. We'll walk you over here to some of our other alpaca stuffies. So these are all handmade in Peru and again, made all out of alpaca so fleece. Soft. Little pieces of cloud that just fell from the sky. I know it <laughs> is, it is. This is some of our yarn that we make. Uh, this comes from one of our champion males. This is a rug yarn. Hopefully, if everything goes well, we want to build a store by the highway. Okay. So that'll be open five days a week for people just to walk in casually whenever they want to. You know, we want to really make something special out of out of the business. So, where did the name Black Barn come from? So. Black is one of my favorite colors. Mine too. <laughs> and I've always dreamed about having my very own black barn. And so we thought that was the perfect name for black barn alpacas. This is cool. And also that we specialize in gray and black alpacas. So it kind of made sense. So this is what we do when we bring people out here. We'll walk around, educate, and then we'll let them feed and, <laughs> um, and spend plenty of time with the little baby. So sweet. <laughs> They love the camera. I know, they do. Look, it's like they know. Oh, I love your lashes. Oh, some of them have great <laughs> lashes. We've I mean, got I put, one with permanent eye makeup out here. I put my, my big eyelashes on to match that. <laughs> here, girls. Oh my god, they're all over. <laughs> okay. This is the alpaca attack. This is the alpaca attack. I want to thank y'all again for this experience and like everybody can come out here. Absolutely. Coming up next, we dive into one of the hottest attractions in the Alamo City. really proud. We have a very immersive environment here. You walk into our aquarium and forget that you're inside the mall. It's a lot larger than most people would guess. We are at our ocean tunnel, uh, which is a 50 foot long tunnel through a beautiful exhibit of an, an ocean environment featuring some amazing things. It's a great location. It's downtown San Antonio inside the Riverwalk Mall. So when we actually are inside sea life, 
what should we expect? So we have 20 exhibits here. Um, we really like to highlight a, a great diversity of different yeah. species here. Uh, you can even touch some animals here. We have an oh. interactive rock pool where we have some sea anemones, sea urchins, sea stars to uh, touch, see what they feel like and uh, kind of satisfy your curiosity. I would love to see it for myself and if you wouldn't mind helping us give us a little tour along the way, that'd be Absolutely. awesome. Absolutely. This depicts a natural river system here in South Texas. I can smell it, it smells fresh, it yeah. smells like the ocean, it smells like the sea. Those are called pajama cardinal fish because of their <laughs> pattern. It looks like they're wearing PJs. Oh my goodness, how cute. <laughs> yeah. So cute. So these are called lined seahorses. This one right here is a male. He has a pouch on his lower abdomen and the female lays eggs inside of that pouch. He fertilizes them, raises them, and then little baby seahorses come out. All right, so what is this exhibit right here? This is our coral reef section. It represents fish from coral reefs. Oh my goodness, there's Nima! <laughs> yeah. This is Stingray Bay. Oh my gosh, look at them! Big, look, 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 look. Hi, yeah. buddy. Give me a little kiss. Something new we offer here at Sea Life is a behind-the-scenes tour. To your right is our quarantine area. This is where we bring in new animals that's on our site here. Right this way. Uh, we have our water quality laboratory. So okay. this is where we test the water in all of our aquariums. There is one more cool okay. thing on our tour. It is our life support system, our filtration for the bulk of our aquariums, our ocean tank and most of our other small exhibits. I'm assuming conservation is like a huge thing. We like to be involved in conservation matters. Uh, yeah. One exciting thing is we have brought in a non-releasable rescued green sea turtle. Her name is guacamole. We <laughs> had a naming contest and, well, green and beloved in San Antonio, so guacamole was a great choice. Oh my choice. goodness, how fitting. <laughs> this is our rock pool. We have creatures from intertidal tide pools off the west coast of North America. And you just want to see what these creatures feel like. Oh, you can feel oh, the outside. <laughs> you've got some lovely starfish. These are called bat stars. Oh, okay, Feels that's quite a, a bit hard, different, yeah, right? that's got a hard shell. Red sea urchins. We want to be nice and gentle with these guys, but can those spines, you? you absolutely can. You just want to be very careful. Ooh, okay. Those spines are sharp. <laughs> sharp? Me. No, I wasn't expecting <laughs> it. This is so here. neat. Great fun for folks of all ages. I'm an adult and I'm having a blast. I could bring my kiddo. I know he's going to be so fascinated with everything that he learns. Great. Cold high five. Yeah. <laughs> Stay right where you are. Yellow Texas. We'll be right back. This restaurant was inspired by the, the Malfi Coast and it's fun to bring something new and different to San Antonio. Hey Pete, how Hi, are you? Denise, it's so good to see good you. Good to meet you. Welcome well, to Alora. I'm so excited to be here and you have wine for me, so that's a plus, an yeah. appetizer. This is great. I think it's really special when you walk into Alora. The, the vibe is so unique and it's really romantic. Yeah. <laughs> we had to imagine how do you bring coastal Italy to San Antonio. Mm -hmm. This building is a beautiful, it's actually an Italian design and it had this beautiful patio that we could just see people eating outside. People seem to like it. I mean it has a, it has a Texas bang, mm -hmm. you know. I think we're serious about food. We're passionate about food. So. Whatever it is we do, our style of Italian, we're very serious about it, you know, and we want to bring more good food to San Antonio. 
do you mind if we order something? Yeah. Do you recommend anything? Abs absolutely. All of it, really, but if you yeah, could I think, choose. I think <laughs> we should have a fish, and then I think we need a pasta for sure. We are going to make our famous prosciutto de parma pane. So we take house-made sourdough bread that we toast lightly. Then we have whipped burrata, so cow's milk burrata cheese that we whip with extra virgin olive oil and lemon zest. Then our prosciutto de parma, aged 18 months, straight from Italy. And then on top is something unique, so we use tele cherry black peppercorns and we turn it into a vinaigrette. There it is. Well, that's a good way to do bread yeah. and cheese. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is so yummy. So we're gonna make our, our tagliatelle bolognese bianco, which is like a white version of meat sauce. Typically in America, you have tomato-driven bolognese. We use milk in this recipe, so it's quite different. House-made tagliatelle, we're gonna put that into the water first. We'll take our saute pan and add in our bolognese sauce. There's ground pork, ground veal, milk, a little bit of creme fraiche, butter, salt, a little black pepper, chili flake, a little bit of spice, and fresh parsley. Boss is gonna go in. All right, so we're gonna finish with Parmesan Reggiano. Again, 18 months, just like our prosciutto. And then we're just gonna make it rain. The best Italian restaurant in San Antonio. That's the goal. I think we're there. Thank you so much. Robbie, the chef, is definitely more creative. He does things that the Italians would go, ah, allora, <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? It's a little bit of spice. I don't know if you taste do. a little I do. chili I have, in there. Yeah. You have to have a little this bit of spice This is from Calabria, which is down in the south of Italy, but instead of a serrano or a jalapeno chile, these are Calabrian chilies. And then, of course, you can't have good food without a good drink, yeah. right? Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Pete. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs>